Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I, The Crafter. And this month's journal, we're going to do what I would call a cereal box journal. Some could call it a junk journal. Basically, I want to start us right at the beginning with this playlist and show you some techniques for making covers and then just putting pages in. So when I say cereal box, I mean one of these things. Okay, we, we have breakfast cereal in our family. Um, a lot of families do and this is reasonably good cardboard to be used so I just want to show you how I could turn this into a journal. Now the thing is we need to remember immediately that the size and shape of the journal is dictated by the panels of the card. So if I look at this section here this is what's going to be the size of my journal and half of that is going to be the cover. It's probably not going to conform to any paper sizes I've got so we are going to have to cut papers and in this journal I'm going to use just scrap papers, oddments, trying to stay within the theme of a junk journal. I must admit I don't actually know what a true definition of a junk journal is. To me it's a journal that's made out of things that are just waste so we'll see. I mean maybe some would class it as a junk, some would not. First thing I do is I cut it down the spine of the box. Um, I'm not going to be using the spine of the box and it's just easier if it's flat to start with. Now I do need to remove all of these edges along here. I'm going to use the scissors because not everyone's got um, a guillotine or got a trimmer. Although I will be using um, a guillotine later on just purely for speed. There are sections of this process that I'm actually going to have to basically just do without you. What I'll do is I'll tell you what I'm about to do, maybe show you an example of what I'm about to do. Then I'll pause the video, go away, get it done and then come back to you. And the reason for that, purely because it'll just get really boring if all you'll see me do is cut paper identically 15 or 16 times. So, And I'd like to keep this video under an hour because I don't see any reason for it to be other than that. Now this will be um, the first journal we're making in my monthly journal challenge and the monthly journal challenge isn't for anyone else, well it can be if you wish to do it, um, it's purely a challenge I've offered myself for 2022 in that I'd like to help or support anyone who's starting out on the journey of journal making and show them several different techniques, well hopefully 12 different techniques for making a cover and then we're going to put pages into each of them. It's pretty much always going to be a three pamphlet stitch or I might do a five pamphlet stitch if it's a big one and I'll show you variations on that as well. Um, as you can see I'm just taking the main panels off this so I haven't told you or maybe I haven't told you. Um, and it's going to be a naked journal and by that I mean it's going to have plain undecorated pages within it. It's probably going to be coffee dyed paper in them. It could be things like graph paper or eco dyed paper. But I have no plans in this series of journal making to actually put ephemeras or tucks or corners in. However, as we will make throughout the year 12 journals, I may periodically, depending on my schedule, my personal schedule, I may actually pull one of those journals and go, right, let's make some ephemera for it, which will just then fall into another playlist. Okay, so let's put the scissors by before I cut myself with them. I now have my two pieces. Am I worried that this is torn like this? No, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to laminate these two together so that I have a little more robust cover to use and um, also I'm not worried that they're not exactly identical at the moment because when you fold card you're going to find that it's going to move so I'm going to trim after I fold it but one thing I do want to do is I do want to find the center mark or find out how wide this is and see if I can make a center mark just to score it so it's going to be easier to fold in the long run so just need to get my um, my scorer Sorry about the noise or scoreboard. Now, if you don't have a scoreboard, what I would say is you can score without it. Get something like maybe a bit of fun foam or maybe put um, a bit of fabric or something underneath and put a ruler down as so. And then take something that's got um, a bit of oomph to it. Like you could use the end of um, 
a paintbrush and score down. You can see I just scored it there. And you can do that at the end of a paintbrush. You could do it with a modeling tool, anything that you see fit to do. So let's have a look and let's see how wide these actually are. Right. That's 11 and, oh, I get really confused about these. One, two, is it three eighths? I think that's three eighths. So I think I'm going to call it 11. And that way it will allow me to be doing this at a five and a half score line. Uh, purely just for ease so I'm not working with funny little figures and that and um, um, numbers and measurements and dimensions so I'm going to put this up to the top and I'm going to score this at five and a half now when you score a line if I score a line down here which I obviously intend to I'm pressing into the fibers then when I fold the card that will become the out outside so I'm compressing down into it I'm not sure how well this is going to score because it's quite thick, but so there you go. I've just given my score line there. Now, the way to remember this is something I learned off Gail Augustinelli. Valleys become mountains. So that's a valley. And then when I fold it, it becomes a mountain. So as you can see, now I know that these are not the same length. We discussed that already. I'm going to trim that afterwards anyway. So that's five and a half. So that will be my outside. Now I'm going to laminate these on the inside, uh, laminate that on the inside. So this time I want the picture facing upwards. Let's do it that way around. I may be able to cut that piece off. And again, I'm going to do five and a half. Again, there's that valley. And if I fold it, there's that mountain and I'm just going to do that there. Now I do this before I glue them together purely because it's just easier and also it means if I have to score it afterwards I'll be scoring through double thickness. I also want to make sure that all of the edges pass each other so I haven't got one that's shy of the other one. So let's just put this to one side now. Let's put the scoreboard to one side. And let's come in and look at what we've got now. As I said, this is part of the process. We will trim up later. Now I'm going to use good old tacky glue for this. You could use double-sided tape. You could use any other glue you want. You could actually use a glue stick. You could use basically any glue that's going to stick paper to paper. This is slightly glossy, but at the end of the day, it is still paper. So I'm going to come in. I'm, oh, wow, that's a bit liquid isn't it um let me just wipe that off a second maybe this bottle's been stood around for a while and it needed a bit of a shake so let me just give it a bit of a shake there you go so i'm going to come in i'm going to put glue on here now after we've um after the glue has set and i've actually built my cover I am going to be doing something else to this cover anyway, so now make sure they marry up top and bottom, give it a bit of a squish with my hand and then I'm going to come in on the other side and do the other same thing. Try and get a bit of glue down near the spine. I don't usually have white glue that's this runny, I have no idea what's going on with this glue. It's the brand I normally use, so, but plenty of glue is fine with me. It's a PVA glue, I can wipe it off quite easily. So give that a bit of a squish down and I'm just going to give it a bit of a press out with my hand, just making sure that that glue is moving around all over the place. And yes, there will be a wet wipe involved in a moment. So let's push it all the way around, making sure it's all the way into the middle, which it is. Making sure it's all nicely tucked in. Now at this point, I like to use bulldog clips. These are bulldog clips or clamps or whatever you wish to call them. Um, this is just something I always use. I've got a little stockpile of them. To me they're probably one of the handiest bits of equipment I've got in, in the workshop and I do use them all the time. So if you ever see them on sale I would say go and grab them and if you are going to be a journal maker these little ones are brilliant as well. So I'm just going to clip this in a few places just so I can have this, make sure it's fully in contact with each other. I'm not worried that it's not staying folded because we'll get round to that afterwards. So let's just put that on there. 
that on there. I think that'll be okay. If you're in, if you're in doubt, stick another clamp on it. That's what I do. Or I would if I can get it on there. There you go. So um, if you're using art glitter glue, of course, this would be a click a quicker stick. But I know not everyone has art glitter glue. If you're using double sided tape, it will be an instant stick. Okay. So. I'm going to let that sit for one, one or two minutes just to dry off on me. I'm just going to put that to one side. I'm going to get the old wet wipe out because I don't want this to be getting messy. And we can start looking at then the sort of kind of pages, sort of kind of, what English is that? Um, the kind of pages I'm going to be utilising to make the centre of my journal or my signature as it's called. So I'm going to try and use the correct terminology as I make these journals or the commonly used terminology as we go along, just so that all of us know if we hear reference to things in the future that we know what people are talking about. Now, um, I'm going to let this sit for a while, as I said, let that sit to one side and let it glue together. If you are someone with a sewing machine, you could always sew around the edge of that as well. But I'm not going to sew around it in this um tutorial basically because not everyone has a, has a sewing machine so I'm going to do something else with this cover to pretty it up to make it look a little more robust uh, feel a little more robust and a little more colorful should we say so now we're going to need to build a signature for the center of the journal now a signature is one of these things it's a number of pages folded and then sewn into a journal. So when you have a journal, see if I can reach my journal. Okay, this is my journal for 2022. As you can see, there's three signatures in it, and the signatures are a combination of pages that are folded and then sewn in. I haven't started this journal yet. This is ready to go. I'm filming this. Ooh, when am I filming this? This is probably about three days before the new year starts. So this hasn't actually been started yet, but that's what a signature in a journal is. And that's a journal that's been made with covers and a spine. This is just a one signature journal that we're creating now. So I need pages. Now, um, I have pulled out a selection of stuff from hanging around in my workshop um, that we're going to use for this. Now, this is where I said it may be called a junk journal because junk journals are traditionally made from things that you wouldn't use for something else or their mail that's come through the door or their magazines or their calendars or their old bits of book pages and stuff. So I've started folding one or two. So this was just a piece of paper that was meant to be for um, practicing handwriting. This is a bit of journal page. Now, let's see. I'm going to fold it this way. Also in a junk journal you'll find that the pages don't have to be the same size or dimension. However, they do have to stay within the confines of um, the cover. So actually it's probably a lie. They probably don't have to stay in the confines of the cover, but it's a lot easier if they do. So I'm just folding my pages. I'm not folding them as one big mass because each of these needs to be cut down or at least cut to size. So I'm just pulling these in. I'm trying to marry up the straight edges just so we're on the right track for it. And I find for me personally, it's easier to make sure they're all folded and then I can go in with a guillotine and cut the correct height, cut the correct width. Um, also, I'm recycling an envelope here. Now, when it comes to envelopes, I like to use these sort of ones in my signatures because what I'd like to do is I will glue that and stick it over. So that's great get myself a bit of a glue stick. I'm going to come in and I'm going to glue this edge over. This is just the way I like to do it. I'm sure some others do this as well, but it's just the way I do it. And then fold that over so then that's glued in. Hopefully I'm in shot for all of that. Then I'm going to fold this over on itself. Now, that means that when this is sewn in the signature, I'll have a pocket there and a pocket there. You can also, after it's sewn in, or even before it's sewn in, you could collage on this or decorate it out. But junk journals are usually decorate as you go. In my opinion, they are anyway. Quite like this edge on here. I found that interesting. So I'm going to put a piece of this in there. 
Now, as I said, these are going to have to be trimmed down. This is just a bit of regular graph paper. Nothing special. All of these are things I just found hanging around in my workshop. Um, this is a card blank. Sometimes you can find card blanks at Christmas in the craft stores and they're really inexpensive and you buy them in a pack and they come with envelopes. I like these because then when I sew this in the signature, let's get that other signature back. So say I was to sew this into a signature. When I go through my book, I've got a short page, but then over here, I've got one that's got a flip out. Now, hopefully it's not wider than um, the signature I'm doing. I'm going to have to lose the flip out, but never mind. So just a regular bit of cream color paper. Uh, you can use copier paper for this. You can use coffee dyed paper for this. Um, the one thing I would say is just always make sure that it's not so thin that it's not going to stand the test of time. Copier paper is fine as long as you don't put too much weight on it. Like if you're hanging pieces of ephemera into the journal, you don't really want to hang loads of stuff on a coffee dye paper because it could tear away from the spine. So these are just pieces I've got. There you go. Folding them over. These these dress them up. Okay, there, that's a bit of paper that I did with some brushos. I was actually experimenting with some pigment dusts probably last year, I think, and that was a bit of paper I was testing stuff on. Maps, maps are always fun to put in there. If you're making a junk journal for a gift for someone and you happen to have maps of the area they live in, that's also a fun thing to do. Now, I don't have a, ma a magazine page or anything in here, but I could have done. I could have recycled magazines, recipe books, anything like that in there. So now I need to find out how tall as in tall this way, my signatures need to be. So I'm going to pull in my gluing and I'm going to find out. So if I get a ruler, now I mean this distance here. So when the book is opening, the signature should sit within the confines of that area. I'll be taking these clips off in a second, so sorry if the rattling annoys you. So let's see, this is going to be approximately seven and a half. Now, Traditionally, in my mind, if this is seven and a half, I would leave quarter of an inch above a quarter of an inch below. And that would give me a nice little gap here all the way around the book. Should I want to put lace at the bottom of a page or should I want to put stuff at the top of the page? Some people will do less than that. I just I just prefer a quarter of an inch. OK, that's just a personal choice. So that means that all of my pages need to be seven inches tall. So I'm going to bring in my big old daddy of a guillotine. I'm a guillotine person. I'm not a person who actually likes to use a trimmer. I don't get on very well with them. So I'm going to go through these and I'm going to cut these down to seven inches in height unless they're less than seven inches in height. Yep, we're going to make some scraps, guys. So if you've got a scrap basket, this is where you need it because you're going to be putting stuff in. These extra pieces you're cutting off can always be used to decorate ephemera and stuff in the future. So, I mean, all of us have, have the ongoing problem that we're always fighting our bu bucket of scraps. There's always so many of them. So let's see what else do you need to know. Um, there are other things you can put into a signature. You could put things like um, a doily, like a paper doily. You could put a lace doily in there. You could put, um, you could stitch in a piece of fabric should you wish to. Uh, you could put transparencies in here. You could put, and by transparencies, I mean things like parchment could go into this, um, rice paper. At the end of the day, you, you can put anything you like into a junk journal. And to be honest with you, you can put anything you like into any journal, to be honest with you, purely because, see, that's already seven, so I'm not going to worry about that. Is it seven? It's just shy of seven. So my OCD means I've got to cut that one. Um, yeah, you can put anything you like in a journal of any sort. The thing you have to remember is, will it stand, why won't I cut that? Will it stand the test of time? Um, and that's the important thing. I want to keep this because I find that really interesting as a textural element for a page. So I'm going to cut that bit off. Now, my envelope is not seven, which is fine. I said if it's shorter, that's fine. 
This was just a page out of an old car manual that I found. Just, I like the color of it. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, how do I write on these pages? You don't necessarily write on the pages. You could stick another piece of paper on front of it and write on that. You could use it to do pieces of artwork on. You could stick pockets and tags and stuff like that on it. There are lots of different things you can do with pages that have already got stuff on them. And some of them are really interesting and you might actually be able to use them. Right, all of the scraps, all these little bits and pieces are just going to go into my scrap drawer. Um, it's a mixture of pattern and plain. I'll sort those out later, I think. Okay, now I've got them all the same height. I now need to make sure, pulling in the signature again, I need to make sure of this distance, the width. So what is it? It's about five... Ooh, it's just past... It's two, H, two eighths short of six. So if I made the pages just shy of five and three quarters, because pages will actually grow when you put them together because the insides ones will push out. Let's see if I can show you on that signature again. Okay, all of these pages are the same size, yet as you put them in, you'll find they'll grow outwards. So right, what did I say that was? See, this doesn't help when I'm talking and thinking. So if I do just shy of five and three quarters, if it needs trimming at all. So that one doesn't need trimming. I doubt whether many of these are going to need trimming, to be honest. Things like this one probably are. Actually, I'll probably get away with that one if I put that on the outside. So just it's worth double checking everything at this point, guys, because, you know, the old adage, check, check twice, cut once. It'll just save you time in the long run. That's pretty much going to make it as well. I've got a feeling these are probably going to need to be cutting down. Oh, maybe not. I should have closed that down and find out where they butt up to. So if you do find when you put your signature together, it is sticking out a little further than you want. You can always go back in and retrim before you sew it in because it, it's easier to do then. It's harder to do if you sew in afterwards. Um, if you trim after you've sewn in. Right, let's take that out of the way. I was lucky all of those seem to fit together. So now um, I don't really have a process. I do know that. Where is it? This page and this page were the biggest pages. So I'm probably going to start with them. So. Right, I'm going to take, take this and I'm going to slot another one in. Then I'm probably going to grab a plain one. There is no method to this, guys. It's just doing it. I'm going to put in my envelope there. Let's pull this over a bit further. Let's put this one in as well. I have put another coloured one in. Um, actually, I quite like the idea of a coloured one on the outside. Let's make it a little more picturesque. Uh, let's put the yellow one in there. And put the writing one in there. Now I know I've got two maps, so let's put one map in. This colour may look nice next to it. Now if you do have a theme for the journal, obviously, this is the point at which you have to arrange your pages within that theme. Okay, so say say they have to be in alphabetical order or they have to be in numerical order or anything like that. It's it's this is when you need to sort it out. This is also when you need to find out whether there's any anything written within your journal. Is it the right way up? So the only things I've got are maps, and I found out that those are the right way up. So if I tap this down, I can see that all of these are relatively the same height. They should all fit quite nicely into my journal cover. Let's pull my journal cover over so I can see it sits within and it comes to just, I would say it just comes to the edge of there. I think I might trim some of that off. Okay, now I don't normally trim off because I cut them correctly in the first place, but it's probably worth showing you how I would trim them off anyway. Let's make sure that's packed all the way nicely down inside. I'm just going to take a clip at the bottom and a clip at the top just to hold them in place while I'm working on them. Okay, 
Now, I, I want to trim off the edge here. If my cover was wider, I wouldn't bother. That would be fine. So I'm going to take something that's metal, and I've got a metal right angle ruler here. I'm going to come in and put that down the edge of there. Then I'm going to come in with a sharp knife, and I'm going to literally cut all the way through these gentle, gentle pressure as I go down, because if I really, really cut into this dramatically, I might tear the paper. Um, there's another way of doing this too. If you're someone who does quilting and you've got a rotary cutter, um, I've got a spare rotary cutter I sometimes cut paper with. Uh, if you are going to use the one you use for fabric, you can do it, but just make sure you get a blade sharpener for your rotary cutter. Now, I think all of those look really nice and neat. I want to know why this page is sticking up higher, however. It's because I didn't slide it down. Just give that a little bit of a jerry root there. So that gives me what I would regard as my signature. All of the pages are in there. We're all ready to go. I'm just going to take this clip, hold it together and put it to one side while we go back to looking at that cover. So right, let's take all of these clamps off here. Um, I'm doing this in real time, so excuse the noise. I'm doing this in real time, so I'm really hoping that the glue has dried. I'm a great fan of using... Um, I just realised I measured that. I need to have measured that. That was right. We may have to do a bit of a, another look at the signature if... Because, see, there was supposed to be a trim there, and I didn't do the trim. My fault. Something to look out for. So, right, we've got our cover started. Now I'm going to come back in with that metal ruler. As I said, I'm showing you the way I do it, and hopefully everything is going to go right. I can't always guarantee it, but I want to leave any mistakes I make in, because by leaving mistakes in, you will also learn not to do them. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to use this right angle just to trim all of the edges and the sides of my cover. Let's take that away. Um, I really like a right angle to press up against and I do that purely because um, I wear very focals and sometimes when I'm looking through my very focals um, a straight line isn't always a straight line so I also like using a metal ruler because as I'm cutting up against it with a blade I'm not damaging the blade uh, I mean I'm not damaging the ruler there you go, right. I do have a feeling we may have to be trimming the width of those signatures again. Because I was an umpty. I, I got ahead of myself. Now normally when I do a process like this, I would complete the cover and then I would do the signature. So because I'm jumping around a bit, I think that's where I may have got a little bit misguided as far as the size of my signature. Signature is going to be okay height-wise. It's probably width-wise. So opening this up again. Yeah, as you can see, it's, it's the right height. It's the wrong width. So I'm going to come in, just give myself a little bit of a mark with a pen. Just so I know where it needs to be trimmed. These things happen. So I'm just going to take a couple of those little clamps one more time just to hold this just so I know that it's all nicely held together for me. What if I could find one? There you go. Now, I've marked that where um, the edge of the cover is. I'm actually going to come in a little bit more than that because obviously I want that quarter inch all the way around. I could go in and measure this, but I'm probably not going to. Right. Um, that's one thing I've learned about um, doing junk journals and stuff is don't beat yourself up if it's not absolutely perfect. And that's quite an important lesson to learn. And it's been a hard one for me to learn as well as far as doing anything artistic, because if you make it too perfect, it loses its character. And I like to have the character. Right. Put that to one side. Now we have a signature that should fit. Again, let's take those strips. 
and put them in the, the scraps drawer. They will probably be coming into play later on. Let's take these clips out of here. So now we've got our cover and we've got our signature and it fits nice and neatly within there and we've got a nice amount all the way around. Now at this point, what I need to do, besides having let my cover dry totally, is my signature is safe and sound. We know it's the right size. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to move this to one side and put it out of the way. Now, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in and I'm going to collage this cover. I could use fabric and cover it in fabric. I could cover it in a piece of 12 by 12, anything like that. We're going to be doing those sort of techniques in future months. What I want to do here is I just want to show you what you can do. It's a bit of a scrap busting exercise. And all I'm going to use for this is I'm going to use a glue book. Oh, rather a messy glue book. A glue stick. And this is the scrap drawer I was talking about that I've just dumped everything into. So I'm going to work my way through and I'm going to use a combination of things like book pages, strips. I'm going to use parts of like coloured paper as well, plain scraps whatever I want on the go and I'm going to cover this entire thing in um, scraps. Now I'm not going to do this on screen because I'm sure collaging, although it's lovely, is probably going to be a little bit boring for you and we're already at half an hour and I want to make sure that I get this in under an hour. So I will be back in a second once I've actually done this. So see you in a moment guys. So here I am again. Um, cover is all collaged. All I used was scraps and I actually used some of the scraps you'll note that were actually um, within the journal anyway. Some of the blues, some of the matte pieces that we tore off. Now all I've done is I just put them on with a glue stick. Um, you will always find that when you glue something down the center because of in and out, in and out, um, because the glue is wet you will always end up with that upper surface just breaking. Don't worry about that. The cardboard beneath it is totally sound. Um, if you are concerned, you could also put a strip of washi down it. But to be honest with you, I never, never worry. Also, when you are collaging up, don't forget you can use washi in this as well. So all I've done is that. So now that this cover is made, it's two pieces of the cereal box laminated together. Plus I've collaged both sides. So it's now becoming quite a robust cover. And the only expense this entire journal should cost you is pretty much time and glue because we're using things that we would have naturally around anyway. Any word of advice I'd give if you were going to do one of these and it's laminated or even at this stage where it's glued, let everything fully dry before you try and do the next steps because it's just easier to work with stuff that's not damp or wet. So we've got our cover and we've got our signature which take that off it now so we now know that this will sit beautifully inside there and we'll end up with a really nice little single signature journal i've also pulled out some elements that will just finish off the cover a bit so we have a complete project now next thing to do is actually to sew this into here so what i need to do is i need to find the middle of my signature which might have been easier if i there you go find the center of the signature e.g. the really middle, middle, middle. Make sure all of your pieces are lined up. Now, if you do have shorter pieces, like I'm knowing here somewhere is an envelope, um, make sure the envelope's relatively centralized in the signature, I mean centralized this way, so that then you know that you've got at least one stitch, if not two or three stitches going through it. So make sure everything's nicely lined up. You've got the center and put the center into the center of the cover. Now, at this point, because it's only a single a single signature journal, you haven't had to make a template. And in future ones, we will be making templates to mark the holes. But this is where our little friend little clips come in again. So I'm going to clip it and I like to make sure it's pushed right in. I then come to the opposite corner, just the way I learned to do it. And I find it works for me. And I'll clip the other corner. And then I will just do the reverse again making sure that this is really tightly into the spine. It just makes it easier in the long run. And don't be afraid if it's not if it's not snug in there, take the clip off and redo it. But these little clips are absolutely, they're a saving grace. I love them. I need to get more of them, to be honest. I've got plenty of the big ones, but not many of the small ones. So now we have this in place and we're trying to keep the book 
or the journal in a V shape, you'll find when you pierce the holes through, if it's in a V shape, there's more likelihood that the awl, which I'm going to show you what one of those is, will go directly through the spine. Now, I know that that's the front, but to be honest, it could be it could be the other way. The only thing you need to remember is, is any wording, and I know the only wording on here is on the map, in the right orientation, it is. So let's put that to one side and show you what else I need to use. I have an old book here that I usually pierce my journal covers through into. There are things called um, book cradles out there that can be used that are pre-made gadgets to hold your book in a V to pierce through. I haven't got one. I haven't found the need to buy one. If anyone ever wanted to gift me one, I'd be quite grateful of it. But to be honest with you, I've done it for years in, in books like this, and I'm totally fine with it. Uh, you do need a little bit of um, equipment, however. Okay, you need a largish needle. You could use a darning needle, or you could use um, maybe one that's for cross-stitch or something. It doesn't need to have a sharp point on it. It just needs to be thick enough so that the eye is large enough to take the thread. The thread. I've got two colours. I've got black and I've got white and I think I'm going to use black for this journal. Um, you can buy this. It's either heavy duty thread or you can buy waxed thread. I've even sewn in with dental floss before now when I ran out of thread once. So that's something you need to get. Um, you can do it with embroidery floss. Um, you can sew it in with most things. Just make sure it's not just normal sewing cotton because knowing normal sewing cotton is just not robust enough. It's going to snap on you. Um, this is an awl or rather a thick pokey tool to be honest. And I want to say awl is spelled A-W-L. It might be pronounced owl. I'm not sure. Um, there are kits for book binding out there. If you search Amazon or eBay or one of the other websites, you'll find them. I know Gail Augustinelli on her website has got, um, if you go to her really useful things, um, on her website she's she's got a kit and you can buy a kit quite readily and once you've got it you've got it for life so and I've got a little pair of scissors so I was going to use the black was nice so let's put that to one side at the moment so what I need to do now is I need to pierce through here all the way through and out to the other side now I've got my book underneath I'm not going to measure because I don't need to but I'm going to put one roughly through the center and excuse me if my arm gets in the way. It usually goes through quite easily. Um, I'm going to do one about an inch from the bottom and one about an inch from the top. This is not an exact science. Um, there's just three holes that go all the way through that will support your spine. Do not take the clips out. So move that to one side, that to one side. Now we need lengths of the thread. Now, um, you will find a lot of people only use single thickness thread. It works perfectly. Because I'm OCD and my anxiety always tells me things are not going to be strong enough, I use double. It's not necessary to use double though. So that's one, two, three, four. So for me, it's four lengths. For a lot of people, it's only about three lengths and they use a single width. Okay, so just know that the way I'm showing you how to do this junk journal or junk style journal, guys, is just the way that works for me. Okay, there are umpteen different ways to do journals. In fact, there's probably hundreds and thousands of ways to do journals and sewing in and selecting signatures. This is just my version. Trying to put this playlist together so that hopefully I can help some of the new subscribers to my channel. And if you've stumbled upon this video, thank you and I hope you enjoyed the video and it's educational. So I'm going to start from the inside. I am on this version. There are other versions and in future journal making videos, I'll try to vary the stitching in process. You actually see it in different formats. So I'm going to go from the inside all the way through to the outside. This is a version of a three pamphlet stitch. I'm going to hold the ends down so that I don't pull them through totally, but I do want them to come through quite tight. And then I'm going to come in from the outside into the middle hole, uh, bottom hole, and pull it all the time. I'm trying to keep that spine relatively taut. Now, I'm pulling this still tight because what I want to do is I want to go through this hole again, but not pierce the thread that's already in there. So 
because if I cut through my own thread, I'll never be able to tighten it up. And don't loop that around like that. So there you go. So now we've got that one in place. So we've got out through the middle, in through the bottom, back out through the middle. We're going to come in through the top. And then this is where we need to start thinking about the process. Or don't loop yourself through the peg um, clip. So now I'm going to, I've got my starting threads on this side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my needle and thread this through so that my thread goes on to the other side. At this point, I can just cut my needle off and make sure I know where it is because I don't want to lose that. So now that I've got my two threads, I just want to give it a bit of a tug just to make sure it's nice and tight. And I give it, just give it a single knot. There you go. I then like to take the clips off at this point. Again, personal choice. Um, because if there's any tightening up to do, or I haven't actually got the signature fully to the spine, one little tug more will do it. Don't be so enthusiastic that you cut through the entire spine. Then I'm going to give it one more knot and it's finished. Now, if you're someone who is going to like, have I got the right word, like to add charms or dangles to your journal, you can do that at this stage by leaving these hanging down. If you're someone who likes to tie a bow, you can tie a bow here. For this particular journal, it's just a junk journal. I'm just cutting these off. It's not going to be a problem. Now, at this point, if you completely and absolutely messed this up and you've got things upside down, all you need to do is snip the threads. Sorry, reclip this, snip the threads and you can pull the threads out and start again. So that gives us our basis for our junk journal. So let's just clip that closed a second only because I can work on the cover and show you without it going off at a weird angle. So the clips are only there guys just to keep this flat for when I'm working. So um, Let's just talk about the, uh, the sewing in again. So I go from the inside out. I then go from the outside in. I then come back up to the middle where I started. I go back out. I go up to the top and I go back in. Then I bring my needle down. I thread it under the needle on the inside and tie it off in a double knot, just making sure that this thread is actually tight. So you'll see me do this a lot of times in this um, playlist of sewing stuff in. So I thought, right, let's see if we can put some stuff in here. And I rooted through some of my stuff and I found that and I quite like that. So I thought, right, we're going to put that on. Um, this is just a quick little journal. You might see it in the future. I'm just going to use some vintage photo on here just to outline this a little bit so that it doesn't just blend into the background. Now, as I said, we might at some point actually come back to this journal and decorate it at some point. But that's not the intent of this playlist. I've also pulled in um, a label I'm going to put on here as well. It's one of my labels I've made. Um, there are videos on making labels easily readily available by me and others. So because it's just paper and that's just paper, I'm just going to stick it on by um, a glue stick. Now, if you're someone who wants to build a journal like this for longevity, before you sew the signature in, you might want to give the cover a coating of Mod Podge. And Mod Podge is, it's this stuff, the matte Mod Podge. It's water-based glue, sealer and finished, and it'll seal it in and make it a little more robust. But I mean, for me, a junk journal is just something I just drop information into occasionally. I do know there's someone out there and I was so happy she shared this with me and thank you. I will not name you because it's it would be unfair to name you. Um, where's my card gone? And what what this lady does is she struggles with anxiety and depression and her inner demons like a lot of us do. And what she does is she makes these. And then when she's in one of those situations, she will empty all of her anger and all of her confusion onto the pages. She'll just write and write and write as part of the mindful process. And then when the journal is filled, she'll then just burn it. And it's her way of handling stress, anxiety and depression. And I'm like, that's something that I'd never thought of doing, but 
um, it works for her and I'm so happy it works for her. So just know that there are different ways of using journals. They're not always keepsakes. Sometimes they're depositories for ideas or inspiration or gratitude or memories or anger management or dealing with depression or mindfulness or just something to make to give the kids and go there you go there's a little book for you you can draw in that and maybe that becomes a keepsake for you of when they were younger lots and lots of different ways so um here's a label it's on sticky label paper but me being me i never trust sticky label paper so i'm just going to put a bit of bit of glue stick on the back of it and bring that in and I'm just going to pop that across there just to give it a little bit of a feature and we can take those off because they were only there to keep the book closed while I worked on it. So that basically is probably the most basic 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 journal I ever make. Okay it was a cereal box, um, collaged cover, spare book papers and pages from hanging around in my workshop and could be anything i mean there's that there's that flip out from a greetings card that's in there there's the other half of the greetings card where's the envelope gone there's the envelope so i could actually let's see if i can find one right so see if i've got a journal card i could just slip a journal card into there and it's done i could collage on that i could write there are so many things you can do with one of these from this point on we'd be doing probably more intricate and ornate covers and keeping the insides as maybe just coffee dyed papers but we'll take it take it as we go along um be eager to hear what you think about this and what what you'd like to see in the future. We'll be doing single signatures for most of the year, but we'll probably do one or two multi-signatures as well. Maybe December, I'll do a December daily one for you guys. I don't know. Anyway, so hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully this video wasn't over an hour long. That's my process. Um, there are plenty of other people out there who make journals, and I'd highly recommend Gail Augustinelli, Nick the Booksmith. Nick is spelled N-I-K. Um, oh, Tracy Fox, uh, Rachel from Roxy Creations. There are so many people out there um, that do them. So find a way that works for you. But there you go. That was my take on a junk journal. And hopefully you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next month for the next one. So in the interim, this is me. This is all my social media where you'll find me, like me, subscribe to me, thumbs up. Whatever you wish to do, positive comments are always welcome and I do always answer my comments. Sometimes not in a timely manner because life gets in the way, but I will always answer questions. Please feel free to ask. I'm try to find the answer for you if I don't know it myself. So until next time, I'm Kerry and I'm Kerry the Crafter. That's C-E-R-I, the Crafter. Bye bye now.